<laughs> oh, this is nerve wracking. An Iron I... Chef, and here I am playing in his kitchen. It's special access to an Iron Chef champion right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. So you're gonna show us some of your secrets? I'll show you a couple. <laughs> Chef Edward Lee from 610 Magnolia in Louisville is pulling out all the stops for us. The way I'm gonna cook this is going to be a little bit interesting. From seafood to soup. Such an easy soup to make, but the flavors are gonna be real complex. I've never had anything like You'll get the secrets to doing this yourself, plus a way out of the box entree. Don't be afraid to get your goat, it's awesome. See how to make braised goat shoulder with all the extras. No, oh, it's amazing, very tasty. And and wait until you see what's for dessert. Beautiful. Bourbon, berries, chocolate, and peanut butter? You can't go wrong when you learn the secrets to this. This is how simple this is, that's all it is. We're going into the kitchen with Iron Chef champion, Edward Lee, right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Tim Laird with Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time, we're in Old Louisville at a place that's simply known by its address, 610 Magnolia. It's a longtime standout on Louisville's restaurant scene, dating back to 1978. But these days, it has an updated modern style thanks to its newest owner and head chef, Edward Lee. Now we're ready for the fun part. You might have seen him on TV before, as he appeared and won on the Food Network's Iron Chef. It was sweating, <laughs> nervousness, okay. yeah. and then before you knew it, it was done. And it worked out great, so how exciting is that? Chef Edward cooks with a style all his own. It's a modern blend shaped by several global influences. Grew up Korean, uh, in a Korean family in Brooklyn, New York and now I live here in the South. So uh, I, I like to say that my food is kind of a blend of Southern uh, attitude um, with a little bit of New York and a little bit of a, a global sort of Asian perspective to it. And the menu is always changing, partly on Chef Edward's whims and partly based on what's fresh from the farm. Now we're not a Southern restaurant, right. you know, we're not doing comfort food, but we do respect and value the farmers, what they do and the ingredients. I can't wait for uh, some of the dishes you're gonna prepare for us today. Yeah. Well, let's go cook. Let's do. Already, this looks fantastic. Tell me what we're gonna do, chef. It's a, a corn and bacon soup with a trio of seafood. Take some bacon, and um, this is my uh, good friends at Stone Cross, uh, makes this local bacon, and uh, I'm just gonna Give it a couple of slices. I'm just gonna add about a teaspoon of butter. I'm gonna put this on some heat. I'm cutting up the corn here. All right, so I've got some corn, two ears of corn, roughly. Such an easy soup to make, but the flavors are gonna be real complex. I'm gonna add this lovely right. yellow corn. And our sweet corn going in, that good, sweet, and salty. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of milk. I'm gonna add about two cloves of fresh garlic. Make sure it's fresh garlic. And then I've got some uh, interesting thing here. This is called quark cheese. Quark cheese. Yeah, and it's a German style uh, sour cream, if you will. Oh, okay. Uh, and I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of that. Let that kind of calmly simmer for about 20 minutes. After that, the last ingredient goes in. Now I'm gonna add just about one and a half cups of vegetable stock. After some more simmering, the chef transfers the soup into a blender to give it a perfectly smooth texture. And we're gonna get it, give it a nice high-powered whir. Voila. Next thing I've got is my seafood trio. I have three uh, uh, interesting seafoods here. I've got uni, which is also known as sea urchin roe. Um, sometimes if you go to your favorite Japanese restaurant, they'll have it there. Um, I've got some lobster tails that I've already poached, but very, very lightly. And then um, this is interesting. Sometimes in the peak season, we are lucky enough to get uh, whole scallops in the wow. shell. Look at the size of this. Still, you see how it's dripping? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there's still water in there. It's still alive. So this is still alive. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna come in here and you're just gonna, just like any bivalve, like an oyster or a clam, you're gonna cut through the bottom and release 
that muscle. Oh wow. Okay. There it is. And let you free. Get that free and wow. Mm -hmm. And this smells so fresh. I mean it's I mean, of the smell. sea. It's just yeah. it smells like the sea. There's no uh, other taste, just oh. You have your beautiful live scale. And there it is. See, and this is what I'm used to seeing, Chef. I no. mean this is fresh. So I've got half a lobster tail, I got one scallop, and I've got my uni. So I'm just gonna add a couple of drops of lemon juice. And um, this is a beautiful uh, uh, first press olive oil from California. Just a little bit of that, nothing a little, crazy. A little bit, because there's a lot of flavor in that first mm -hmm. pressing. The way I'm gonna cook this is going to be a little bit interesting. This is my new favorite toy in the kitchen. This is actually a uh, Himalayan salt stove. I bake this in the oven. It's about a half an hour at 450 degrees, so this is screaming hot. And what we do with this is we cook uh, seafood on this very lightly. And what it does is actually, if you notice, I didn't add any salt to my seafood right. because we're gonna pick up the salt from the stone. Oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this on here and I'm gonna wait for you to, I'm gonna have you just kinda watch them for me, okay? Okay. This is a big responsibility with, with Chef Lee. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we're just giving it just a little warm sear on the outside. Got you're, it. You're doing very well. Are we well doing all right? Yeah, <laughs> well from there, it's right into a special bowl that will actually keep the fish warm as it comes to your table. A little bit of fennel that I'm gonna throw on top of here. Nice. We're going to add the corn soup to the bottom. I've got a little bit of pistachio oil. I'm gonna drizzle just a few drops on top. And get this, curry toasted pumpkin seeds. Just like two or three little leaves of tarragon. The way this bowl works is we have our hot soup on the bottom. We take, we close the lid with this, and we have our, our seafood on top. And what that does is it actually keeps that seafood just slightly warm. Oh, what a great idea. And so this is uh, sort of our little surprise bowl. When we serve it at the restaurant, uh, the server will actually open up the soup. Okay, there you and go. So that and do the reveal. Yeah. Part of what we actually uh, encourage you to do is take a little bit of the seafood, dunk it in the warm corn uh -huh. soup, and then, and then taste. And then taste. All right, it. I'm so, dunking. Here we go. Here it comes. Oh, that is flavor. Chef, that is incredible. Thank you. Mmm. That's awesome. This is incredible. You can taste how fresh the scallops are. They are delicious. This is very good. I've never had anything like that. It's uh, very fresh. It was, I've never tasted anything like this combination. Beautiful. Thank you. That is incredible. Chef, thank you. Thank you. For more information on 610 Magnolia or any other featured restaurants on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, log on to newlocaltv.com. Now this is the fun part. And for more secrets, stay tuned. Because up next, we're really gonna get your goat. Really. I've never had goat before. Don't be afraid, it's amazing. Especially when you get the secrets to doing it like they do at 610 Magnolia. Oh, it's very nice. It's delicious, it's amazing. That and more when Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs return. Tim Laird with you again with more Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time we're in Old Louisville at a place known nationwide for its incredible top chef and its name is simply its address. 610 Magnolia is actually two restaurants across the street from each other. There's the main dining room and there's this known as the Wine Studio. The Wine Studio is much more casual and is designed for special events. We do uh, pasta parties, all the dinners we do here are family style. And of course, it's the perfect place for wine tasting. 610 has been a hot spot for a long time, but with the arrival of Chef Edward Lee, it's even more popular. Back in the old days of, I think, 1978, uh, uh, Eddie Garber opened 610 Avenue, and originally when he opened it in 1978, it was, uh, it was the place to be in Louisville. Edward first visited the restaurant in 2001 on a trip from New York. Yeah, so I came down for Derby, <laughs> and it was all these celebrities, and, and the city was so beautiful and everything. No one told me the rest of the year it's not like that. <laughs> when he returned to New York, he got a call luring him back to the bluegrass. On coming back, Eddie Garber called me and said, you know, 
you should move down to Louisville and take over my <laughs> restaurant. And I said, you got to be kidding me. That's, that, that's the zaniest idea I've ever Especially heard. Especially coming from New York and yeah. you're saying, am I going to go to Louisville? What's this going to uh, be about? The rest is history. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, I never look back. Chef Edward has fallen in love with the fresh farm ingredients he gets here in Kentucky. So what we do is we try and start with a southern ingredient, be it sorghum, corn, uh, some local seafood. Uh, and then we build around it and we try and add sort of a global perspective, maybe a modern twist. Chef, I know you can cook just about anything and everything and make it a masterpiece. One of my favorite meats that I don't see a lot or I don't see enough on menus is uh, goat meat. And, and right. here we have a, a goat shoulder. Anxious to try some goat. Never had goat. Lamb, yes, but goat, nah. <laughs> goat. It's a bit uncommon, but also uncommonly good. Especially when you learn the secrets to doing it like Chef Edward Lee does. This is a goat shoulder, and it's been uh, uh, wrapped up nice in, in this netting so that it's going to stay together. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to give it a nice rub. This rub is, is mostly salt. Okay. It's got a little bit of curry in it. It's got a little bit of clove in it. It's got a little bit of paprika. Uh, and a little bit of a Mexican spice called aji amarillo. Oh. All right? But very simple. All these ingredients you can find anywhere. Now I want you to just kind of give th it a this nice... This is your secret rub, so you just now... Uh, I've divulged, I've divulged, I've divulged your, your secret rub to everybody. You, did, you, did you leave out an ingredient? There might have been an ingredient. Ah, see, I knew it. There was probably... All right, Colonel. Here we go. All right. I'm going to flip it over. And I want you to make sure the important thing is you get it on thick. Okay, all and then sides. rub it in. Yeah, and, and cover the entire thing. I actually like to rub it and then put it back in the refrigerator and just let it sit for about an hour. Another secret. This is the perfect thing to use. And this okay. is a Dutch oven. It's a ceramic Dutch oven. Here, this is some olive oil that I've just uh, um, heated up. Got a little bit of smoke going. And then. Oh, then you get that sizzle. Then now you you're searing in all the uh, goodness all already. Right. On the stove top, Chef Lee browns the shoulder on all sides. This is going to take about six to seven minutes. You want to get a nice crust all over. You don't want to burn it. This, these spices will burn pretty quickly, so you don't want to put this in the pot and walk away. Now we're ready for the fun part. I've got all my vegetables cut up already, so what we're going to do is just add them one by one. Onions, carrots, celery, fennel, with uh, a little bit of ginger, some bay leaf, and some peppercorn. Peppercorn. Whole peppercorns Whole peppercorn. are going in. Just going okay. right in there. About a cup of coffee. Okay. Strong black coffee. That'll wake us up. That coffee's gonna get your goat. <laughs> this is about three cups of chicken stock. I'm Asian, you know. So I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, hoisin sauce. We're gonna add a little bit of sorghum to it as well. See, this is the cuisine you do, chef, so well. You're mixing all the flavors around the world and bringing it back to Kentucky. And here it is. And from Kentucky, it's right back to Asia with soy sauce. That looks great. I got my oven on at 400 degrees. Okay. I'm gonna stick it, the lid on, I'm gonna put it in the oven, and um, we're gonna drink some wine. Oh, good. And, uh, all right. We're gonna come back in about four hours. All right? all right, we'll see you in about four hours after about four bottles of wine. Well, maybe more than that. All right, it's been four hours, chef. I can't wait. Now this is, there it is going to be screaming hot. Chef carefully removes the net, and once the meat rests, it's ready to slice. But there's more. Next, a simple preparation of Kentucky-grown white asparagus. I love the clean flavor of white asparagus. The outside is a little bit woody. It's that rough, woody yeah, texture. Yeah, so what I do is, but you don't want to take off too much. So I just, you just want to take off the smallest little. Just a little bit. Yeah, and just, I kind of rotate it. I've got one end on the cutting board, I'm holding the other end, I just kind of rotate. Right out of the field, and it keeps all the nutrients in there. He poaches the asparagus in a mixture of warm water and olive oil. I'm just gonna let that poach for about one minute. I like this, this is a great technique too. A little water, a little olive oil. And that's it, and there's a little bit of salt added, and that's it. And he'll serve that with grits. Cheese grits, in fact but none like you've probably ever had before. It's just, it's grits, um, a little bit of water, and a little bit of milk, that's it. Okay, so okay. very creamy texture already. I've got a wheel of uh, camembert, and what I do is I actually just throw in there rind and all. Okay. Uh, and I'm just gonna throw the whole thing in there, and what's miraculous is, the entire wheel is just gonna melt away. Not that I'm afraid of the goat, but I, this looks like a whole meal in itself. I could have this. Oh, and a bottle of Chardonnay or something. Exactly. Yeah. The entire wheel of camembert has camembert. now melted into there. Take a nice slice of our braised goat. We've got our little uh, 
Asparagus. Again, what I want to do is I'm just going to take this braising liquid. Look how rich that looks after that's been four hours cooking down. And this is that, you know, it's got the coffee in there, it's got the ginger in there, it's got this chicken stock, so. And he finishes it off with a couple of quickly sauteed Brussels sprout leaves on top. Like so. I'll tell you what, Chef, that's the prettiest goat I've ever seen. Mind if I get your goat? Yeah, you <laughs> as tender that is. Oh my God. That, Chef, is killer. And just beautiful, the textures that are going on in this thing, just nice and creamy and flavorful. Mmm. Just has a lot of flavor to offer, a lot of things to, to discover while you're eating it. Very, very tasty. I've never had goat before. It is delicious. Very tender. Melts in your mouth. Really, really good. For those of you who haven't had goat before, I'll tell you what. Don't be afraid. This is a wonderful dish. Thank you. Let's toast to goat. <laughs> toast to goat. Toast to goat. Toast to goat. Chef Lee. Chef Lee. Yes. yes. Up next, it's time for dessert. Okay. There it is. Yes. Voila. Success. Stay tuned as 610 Magnolia chef Edward Lee reveals the secrets to his new twist on a chocolate mousse. And there you have it. Never had anything like this before. That's next on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time we're in Old Louisville at 610 Magnolia, home to Iron Chef champion Edward Lee. Chef Edward was on fire as he took down Iron Chef Jose Garces in a battle of tongue in cheek. And now that he's back home, the memory is almost a blur. The, the day of the actual filming went by so fast. <laughs> I, know, we, I was a nervous wreck. I had my crew with me and uh, everyone just stepped up. The atmosphere at 610 Magnolia is much more subdued than it is in Kitchen Stadium. It's first class service all the way. Once you book the table, that's yours for the entire night. It is, it is. We, we 610 is, uh, we believe in the, the old fashioned way of service, which is it's not rushed. Uh, uh, it is your table for the whole night. Chef Edward never ceases to amaze his guests, and he's always coming up with something new. Now, Chef, you have a saying. If it ain't broke, fix it. We try and make a minor change to the menu every week, and we will do every four to six weeks, we'll do a, a drastic seasonal change in the menu. I don't believe just because it's, it, it's something that's great, um, we, we tinker with it anyway. Lately, he's been tinkering with some dessert recipes. And wait until you see what he's come up with now. It looks like we're in for a sweet ending. I mean, you have some of my favorite things out here, chocolate, butter, sugar, cream, a lot of fun goodies here. What are we gonna cook up now? It's going to be chocolate and peanut mousse uh, with a bourbon infused cherry. Very simple, you got about a pound of chocolate. He melts the chocolate over a double boiler. We don't want to put the chocolate in direct heat. That will burn the chocolate. <laughs> will you do the honors? <laughs> All right. I want you to gently <laughs> stir the chocolate, but if you stir it too much, it's gonna seize the chocolate. No pressure, <laughs> but if you seize the chocolate, the whole dessert's screwed up. Oh, okay. okay. So. Beautiful, you're doing beautiful. <laughs> I've got about a half cup of milk, a half cup of sugar, and about a quarter cup of butter. I'm giving you two things. You're gonna watch that and you're oh. gonna watch that too. Now we're gonna multitask? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that I use to uh, hold the chocolate better uh, is something called gelatin. And, and they come in a dried form like this, and all you have to do is put them in some cold ice water. They absorb the water and they become very soft and pliable. Butter and sugar mixture. Three great things. Goes into one's end of the blender. Then, in goes the gelatin that's been soaking. It's gonna help it um, stabilize it, okay. basically. It's gonna help it gel. And I've got my powdered malt. This was the stuff you make those malted milks. Exactly. He blends the malt with the gelatin and melted butter. You wanna leave that on there for a little while because you wanna get a nice frothy oh, look at that. thing there. You can stick your finger there. Can I really? Yeah. All right. Taste it. That's gonna have that really malt Ooh. flavor to it. It has that malt flavor to it. And then it's ready to mix with the chocolate. That is some silky melted chocolate. That's, that's exactly what I want. This is gorgeous. I could not have done it better myself. Now that just goes right into our tempered chocolate. And you gotta work quick at this point because the chocolate now is cooling down. Keep this moving at this stage. Got some whipped cream. I knew we were missing something. Mm -hmm. And that's going to just give it that mouthfeel. So you just want to gently keep going. I love the technique, Chef, is uh, turning the bowl, working the spatula. You want to keep this light and 
airing. I've got a crust here okay. that we have um, that's basically just brioche, a little bit of butter, peanuts, and some sugar. And that's gonna that's be the it. base? And that's gonna be the base. And all you have to do is pour this in. And then this will go into a nice cold refrigerator. It'll take probably about two or three hours to set really cold. Okay. And then uh, we can slice it out. Do I get a look at the spoon? Yes. <laughs> I like that. That's my favorite job. I get to do something after making the chocolate. There is a reward. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to run my knife under some hot water. There we go. I'm going to sort of take my blade around the edge here. So we want to make sure that it's going to come out in one pop. Okay. okay. There it is. Yes! yes. Wow. Success! Here's a little secret too. You, you run some hot water on your blade, but don't wipe the blade off. Leave, leave some Leave uh, some of the water on yeah. there. Okay. And that'll actually help to uh, push the knife through the dessert. Wow. See how that glides through there? Mm-hmm. Put our dessert right there. I've got some dried cherries. Okay. Uh, some golden raisins and some uh, black currants. Got about a half a cup of sugar that I'm gonna pour over that. Yeah. I have two vanilla beans that I'm gonna split down the middle, and that's uh, because I wanna reveal all those uh, plentiful little seeds in there. Those go right in there. And then last but not least, a generous helping of bourbon. I like your pours, chef. You, you can make a cocktail for me anytime. I like that. This is how simple this is, that's all it is. You put those four ingredients together, you put it in a pot, you bring it to a boil, let it simmer for about 15 minutes, and you're done. You know what, Chef? I'll tell you what, that, that just on ice cream would be good, too. What do you think? That, that just, just by just itself. By itself. <laughs> it's Very simple, and I kind of want to just distribute that around so that each bite, you're going to get a little bit of this. This is a little bit of peanut butter pudding that we make. Peanut butter and chocolate. Another nice combination that's going together here. I've got a little bit of a, what we call a peanut butter powder. And basically it's a peanut butter uh, emulsified with something called tapioca maltodextrin. And it just turns um, anything that is a liquid form into a powder. Chef's almost also a chemist. And there you have it. Wow. Malted chocolate mousse with bourbon, cherries, and uh, peanut powder. I've got to try this. Oh, man. You can still taste the bourbon. It's so good. It was spectacular. That is incredible. That was pretty impressive. It was very good. Talk about an ending. The dessert was amazing. It was fantastic. It's really, really good. Man, I can see why this guy is the Iron Chef. I'm telling you, he is awesome, incredible. Chef, we are so lucky to have you in Louisville. You are awesome. That'll do it for this edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird, and we'll see you next time. I'm Chef Lee from 610 Magnolia, and thank you for watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs.